Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Rustam and today I'm going to record another video uh, about vowels of English. Uh, this course uh, is titled as Phonetics and Phonology and uh, this is being taught to BS English for students at Government Degree College, Avelia. So today's topic is Sonority Sequencing Principle in Syllable Structure. So what is sonority? Uh, like uh, in a previous video, I talked about sequence of uh, consonants in a cluster. So today, uh, we'll uh, try to learn uh, why can't uh, we say LP? We usually say PL, P-L-A-Y, play, P-L-A-T-E, plate. But uh, I think there is no word in English which has L before P. So why is it so? Let's go to the next slide and uh, see what is sonority. So first uh, I'll define sonority. Sonority is like uh, as, the, as, as you can read yourself on the screen that if the pressure behind the constriction is approximately equal to the pressure air pressure, the sound is called sonorant. Sonorant means uh, musical. The sound is known as sonorant. So what is air pressure? Like whenever we try to articulate consonant sounds or vowel sounds, air flow uh, experiences obstruction. In the case of vowel sounds, there is no obstruction. So we can say the air pressure, uh, that air pressure means that lungs uh, push uh, the air upward into trachea and this air uh, travels upward into trachea and then uh, gets into uh, mouth and then goes into atmosphere. So the pressure closed to our lips outside, I mean outside the lips, the pressure outside the lips is known as ambient pressure. So if the inside pressure, pressure in the vocal tract and outside pressure is equal, are approximately equal, the sound is known as sonorant. Now in the case of vowel sounds, yes, as there is no obstruction anywhere in the vocal tract, so inside pressure and the outside pressure is equal. So vowels are known as the most sonorant uh, phonemes. In the case of uh, uh, this uh, consonants, yes, uh, there is uh, more pressure inside the vocal tract cause a lot of constriction at lips occurs. So like when we uh, uh, say p, b, t, d, k, g stops. So air is completely stops, uh, stopped at the lips. A lot of pressure is built up behind the lips. So there is a lot of constriction and lot of pressure. So inside pressure is more than the outside pressure. So uh, consonants, uh, particularly the stops consonants, they are less sonorant. And uh, here is a scale, as you can see here. So I have shown here that the vowels have the, um, uh, they are more sonorant. They have high peak of uh, musicality. Okay, now coming uh, down on this scale, we have approximants. And these two uh, consonants are known as semi-vowels or we can also call them glides. And these two vowels are known as uh, liquids. Particularly this one, this one is approximant and uh, this one is uh, lit lateral sound, but we can consider all these four as approximants. So they, uh, because as they are equal to vowels, approximants, so yes, they are also sonorant. And uh, in their articulation, uh, there is not uh, much pressure inside the mouth. Uh, then comes nasals. So nasals are at, uh, the, if we assign values, so this is 6 and this is 5 and this is 4. So they are uh, a bit um, uh, less sonorant, but these three, cat these three uh, phonemes, category of phonemes, these are known as sonorant. 
sonorant mean that when they are articulated, the air pressure inside the vocal tract is almost equal to the ambient pressure outside the lips in the atmosphere. So, yes, they are known as sonorants. sonorants. And this group is known as obstruent. obstruents. They, uh, they are not as sonorant as are these ones. That's why I have written here pretty sonorant. That is uh, too much musicality. And uh, here not very sonorant. Okay. Now uh, please uh, have a look at this uh, scale. So the least sonorant as I have shown here are the stops. Because much air pressure is inside the vocal tract. So it is the pressure inside and the outside is not equal. Rather it is more than outside as, as I have shown here. Uh, you can see here more pressure inside and uh, less pressure outside. So there is no equal pressure. So they are the least on this son uh, sonority scale. And highest sonority is given to vowels. So please have a, uh, uh, have a close look uh, at this scale. That is uh, uh, let's say highest son uh, sonority. Then this one, that's this one. And then we have the uh, fricatives, friction. Uh, although there is a stoppage, or a stoppage of air, there is a built up of pressure, but still uh, it is uh, the constriction is not much because uh, air is uh, let uh, uh, air is allowed to go outside with a friction, audible friction. So pressure is uh, although not equal uh, to the outside pressure. But uh, still we can say that they are higher on the musicality scale. Then we have affricates and the last one are stops. So here, uh, this I have shown. Let me read the uh, uh, definition of sonority again for you. So what is sonority? If the pressure behind the constriction, and constriction can happen in uh, various places inside the vocal tract. It can happen it can occur at lips, bilabial sounds. It can occur uh, at uh, your labiodental place, then dental, then uh, alveolar uh, uh, place, alveolar ridge place, then uh, palatal, and then soft palate. So uh, this constriction can occur any anywhere. So if the pressure behind this constriction is approximately equal to the ambient air pressure, the sound is called sonorant. Okay. Let's go to the next uh, slide. Okay, now what is the sonority sequencing principle? SSP. The center of a syllable, that is nucleus, has a sonority peak, as I just said in the previous uh, picture, which is preceded and or. Th there is a possibility and preceded and are followed by a sequence of consonants with progressively decreasing sonority value. Okay, maybe it is not comprehensible. Uh, let me rephrase it for you. Now, have, have, uh, please have a look here. Okay, sonority within a syllable increases from onset to the nucleus and then decreases towards coda. Okay, let's uh, try to understand it with an example. So here is a sonority scale. So at this scale, as we can see here, uh, th these are stops. I have assigned them value number one. Then we have affricates, fricatives, nasals, approximants, and vowels. So in uh, sonority, that is musicality. These are uh, the vowels are most uh, musical. Let me. This, this is the peak, peak mean vowels or nucleus. So here is the peak, peak of musicality. It means the uh, equal pressure to the ambient pressure. And this is the least. So here it rises, one, two, three, four, five. So it means that first of all, like if we say, if we say uh, bring, bring. So I will be somewhere here. And then nasals. Uh, here I have shown nasals. Uh, this one. This one. You can see. So, ba is a stop. So, it has got value 1. 
and then rrr, this is uh, known as approximate so let me show it here again this is approximate so its value is uh, 5 and uh, so in English in English as we can see here that ba will come first and then ra will come bring and here is the peak and then we come to here uh, 4 so it rises from uh, 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 coda sorry onset to the peak and then it falls down towards coda so in English uh, we can never have ra before ba so because why because it has more uh, uh, musicality and sonority so it must be close to peak it, it, it should be somewhere here and it should be uh, lower than the uh, uh, R sound uh, this R, R sound that's why uh, this uh, consonant cluster will be like this bring as we can see here bring so always B will precede this R, R sound uh, and this is as we all know onset and here is the nucleus and here is the coda so it rises here and then it comes down okay now here I have mentioned stops mean these six sounds p, b, t, d, k, g so these six sounds are known as stops so voice stops have more musicality than uh, voice less stops anyhow we can consider them as uh, at the lowest uh, uh, rung that is they have got uh, level one then we have africans ch, j, ch, j. so uh, after this uh, uh, we have uh, uh, these uh, fricatives as you can see here uh, let, okay let me show you the fricatives so fricatives uh, they are so these are known as fricatives yes they also have got sonority but their sonority is more than uh, affricates and uh, stops but less than nasals so we have these nasals mm. then we have this one mm. then we have this one uh, mm. so nasals have are more uh, more sonorant then as we can see these um, nasals are more sonorant they have got uh, more musicality than nasals okay uh, sorry uh, nasals are more uh, sonorant than fricatives okay then we have approximate in this group as we can see here these two are known as semi vowels they are most sonorant because they are just like vowels they, we call them semi vowels so there is less constriction inside the vocal track so and uh, th this one it is also approximate uh, these two are also known as glides but this one and this one they are known as liquids these two are known as liquid uh, separate name for them liquids in this uh, they are comparatively less sonorant than these but I have assigned the same value to the this group we uh, I have uh, uh, they they are known as uh, uh, let me scroll the screen for you here let me zoom out wait a while yes so these are approximate and uh, their value is 5 however they are quite close to vowels so here are vowels and there are 20 vowel sounds in English so they are the peak that's why they are known as in a in a syllable structure as you can see here here is we have onset here we have coda and uh, sorry coda and this one this this one is known as nucleus nucleus so highest peak mu musicality at the peak so uh, uh, up till here uh, up till uh, uh, vowels uh, the musicality increases sonority increases but after this it decreases okay after this it it decreases so this picture as you can see on the screen is known as sonority scale okay let's uh, uh, go to some examples 
here is an example uh, there is a word brand b r a n d brand i have shown it here b r you can see here r this is a uh, peak that is a now this is mm, mm, now this is d d okay now if we go back to scale so this is stop its value is 1 let me show uh, let me show you here this this one is a this one is a stop sound so its value is 1 so le least sonority now r is a approximate or liquid or uh, we can say it is close to vowel so its value is 5 here mention 5 as you can see 1 2 three four five five boxes like one two three four five now this is vowel or wall uh, central uh, central wall or uh, peak so its val value is six let me draw it below so just see one two three four five six now this is the sequence b r a as you can see here it is decreasing from peak to this progressively decreasing here and now pro progressively decreasing here as well as we can see here this is n and is a nasal its value is 4 1 2 3 4 its value is 4 and again it is stop it is a least uh, sonorant, sonorant so its value is 1 so sonority decrease uh, increases from uh, in the uh, in the onset as we can see let me draw it again sonority increases 1 5 and 6 and it decreases in the coda in the uh, coda this is coda this is onset Sonor uh, sonority sequencing principle says that sonority increases in the coda in the onset and it decreases in the coda as we can see here so in English language uh, this sequence cannot occur let me maximize we cannot say R B A and D so R can never come before B B R this can never occur now this is the normal sequence N and D but it can never occur D N why because the sonority level will be violated so this is more musical so it must be close to vowel close to the peak uh, the highest uh, sonorant here so if we see, if we do like this so now the sonor sonority uh, principle is violated because uh, sonority must decrease from the peak so if this is the peak so n should be here and da should be here that's why this uh, uh, syllable structure as you can see here this is the peak and this is onset and this is coda so here it increases like this now this is this decreases so uh, consonant clusters follow uh, the sonority principle okay here is another example see the word bring uh, as you can see here bring so this is onset this is coda now here is a consonant cluster now we can never have rb in english it is not possible and uh, the it's uh, it's uh, you know evidence is the sonority principle N let me show you the sonority here so the vowel it has got value 6 as you can see here because the peak 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so this i have shown here its vowel its nucleus it is rhyme now r as you can see here it it is just approximate and it it must be clo close to uh, there are four approximate like this one this one then let lateral sound and this this rotic sound rotic so these are known as approximate so their value is five so it is shown here one two three four five now ba sound is a stop sound so its value is one now see uh, from the peak uh, from the peak it is progressively uh, decreasing here or if we state it in another way then we say that sonority increases uh, in the in the in the 
onset yes it is increasing one five and then six so that's why i say that b will always come first and then ra will come and then a and then bring okay so we can never have any word in english in which r is followed by ba or b it can never occur because of sonority or musicality principle now last example is this one sometime we uh, here is a, a bigger word, a word diploma diploma as we can see here diploma diploma now uh, there are three syllables here as we can see here three syllables so let's see uh, the sonority principle in in each okay let me dis uh, describe it here the first syllable is da so this is the structure of the syllable as you can see here so one and six yes d now plo actual consonant cluster is in uh, here L let me maximize it so here is the consonant cluster as we can see here pa and l so it can never be like lp it will always be pa first and la second why because let me show you here so this l are uh, this l is a letter so its sound is l lateral sound so it is approximate and uh, are clo very close to uh, the peak as we can see here peak is at 6 so its value is 5 so definitely it must always be close to the peak so pa can never be here we can never say pa or l so it must always be l should be here and pa should be here so pa has got a value of 1 so that's why we say uh, or the sonority principle says that it should be like this plo d plo then ma as you can see here this is the uh, peak that is nucleus and there is nas nasal sound its value is 4 as i have shown a 1 to box each box shows one grading so let me show you one this let me show again this is uh, one box 2 3 and 4 so this is the value of this uh, nasal sound mm. so as there is no coda so we can say it is increasing uh, like 4 to 6 so here so sonority level increases from this to this so there is no question of any ambiguity here but as far as this central uh, vowel is concerned so we must know that uh, this will be the uh, sequence uh, of consonant in the cluster that uh, never ever uh, you will never come across a word like this we always say let's say play p l a y play we say plate p l a t e plate so see this is a consonant cluster and uh, just try to find out any word which starts like this no word will start like this and why the rule is that this should be here that this should be here and this should be here because this is more sonorant than this one this is a stop but this is sonorant so it is it is more musical than uh, this one this is more musical than this one hope you have got a basic idea about uh, uh, sequencing or uh, uh, like a in a structure of a syllable how we arrange uh, the, these uh, consonants uh, the only exception in this uh, uh, sonority sequencing principle is uh, the sound s which is pronounced as s so it uh, does not follow sonority sequencing principle rest every uh, sound uh, follows uh, sonority sequencing principle thank you very much for watching this video so uh, i will again uh, cover uh, these topics uh, in short videos and uh, you are requested to subscribe the channel and also press the bell icon so that uh, you are notified whenever i upload a new video to my channel also uh, i would uh, like uh, i would request you 
to please uh, share these videos with, uh, with other students and if you are teacher listening to this uh, recording uh, you are requested to upload to your own channel if you have a youtube channel share it in a in a facebook group uh, uh, i'm just trying to reach out uh, to so many uh, students who are locked down at home and uh, still there are two months like uh, uh, government says that uh, the lockdown is to be uh, uh, like uh, this uh, self isolation or self quarantine uh, is going to be up uh, uh, on 1st of june i think so two months still we have on our hands so our students should be engaged and they should be provided some material so that they can be just uh, uh, pouring over it and they should like uh, this this was a very short video so uh, students are, are directed to uh, google the topic again or uh, listen to uh, youtube videos uh, because there are so many uh, youtubers teachers experts i'm not as expert on phonology as others are and uh, still i have tried to uh, sensitize you towards issues in segmental phonology thank you very much for watching this